Welcome to worship at St. James Church. We're so glad you've joined us. I'm especially glad to welcome you to St. James Family Chapel. Now for this service, if you are watching at home, you need to have some things ready. Every week we want you to have a candle or maybe two. Every week we want to make sure that you have your singing voice because you're going to need to sing and we need to know you're also coming with your full heart so that you can join us in listening to the words of Jesus and offering prayers. Sometimes during this service, I'm going to say, now would be a good time to push pause so that you can do some of what we're doing here in the church at home with the people you're with, the people you love. Now, Repeat after me as we open in prayer. Dear God, Dear God, we have gathered to worship you. We have gathered to worship you. We have come, we have come to, thank you to thank you for loving us. For loving us. Amen. As we light the candles, we give thanks for the great light of the world, your son, Jesus. May our lives be a light to others. This is a time for you to push pause and light the candles that you have at home. And remember that Jesus is the light of the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you overcame death with love and opened for us the gate of everlasting life. Fill us with your life-giving spirit, so we can join you in building your kingdom of justice and love. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said, God's kingdom is like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. There were five smart girls and five foolish girls. So the foolish ones took their lamps, but no oil to put them in them. The smart girls took oil so they could light their lamps. The night was long and the bridegroom wasn't showing up, so they all fell asleep. At midnight, he finally showed up. 
The girls without oil said to the smart girls, give us some of your oil so we can see. But the smart girls replied, no, there isn't enough for all of us. Go get some for yourselves from the dealers. While the foolish ones were buying the oil they should have brought with them, the bridegroom came and took the smart girls into the wedding and then shut the door. Finally, the foolish girls got some oil and came back to the wedding. They knocked on the door and they said, let us in. But they heard in reply, sorry, too late. Point of this story is that you need to be prepared and you need to stay awake because you just don't know what will happen or when it's going to happen. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus told a lot of stories and many of the stories that he taught, in fact, many of the stories in the Bible are all about weddings. And uh, weddings are always complicated. They are today. And they were even maybe more complicated in the days when Jesus was around. And they had customs that we don't really practice anymore. One of the customs was that friends of the bride, bridesmaids, uh, would go and escort the bridegroom, the guy who was going to get married, to the house of the bride and uh, begin the celebration. So there's this group of uh, young ladies who would be there to help the groom uh, and to be ready for the wedding. And in the story Jesus told, there are 10 of these. So there are five um, bridesmaids who are called smart. We heard that in the story, right? And they go and they wait. And this could take a long time, I should say. This could take a long time for the bridegroom to come. And so they would go and they would just wait. But they brought lamps because it might get dark out and they would need to be able to light their lamps so they could see. And they brought the smart girls, brought some oil for the lamps so that they would have something to see. They were thinking ahead. They were paying attention. They were watching and preparing for uh, what was going to happen. There were five of these smart girls. There were five not so smart girls, right? And they came to and they brought, they were ready for the wedding. They were kind of all excited about going to the wedding. It's fun to go to a wedding and all that stuff, but they didn't bring any oil. They came empty handed. And so um, they were not ready for what was going to happen. And they waited and they waited and they had a good time and they talked and they were friends. And then the sun began to go down and it got dark. And they fell asleep. The moon came out. Here they fell asleep. This is how we draw people going to sleep. They snored, right? And then all of a sudden, late in the night, the bridegroom came. Meet the bridegroom. He's happy because he's getting married, right? And he came and they said, wake up. And the girls who were not so smart said to the girls who were really smart, hey, we forgot oil. We weren't thinking about it. Can you give us some oil? And the smart girl said, well, we don't really have enough to give. You know what you should do? You should go. You should have thought of this, but you should go and buy it from a dealer. So the, the not so smart girls went away and the bridegroom went into the party and took the smart girls with them. And they were, what do you think? They were so happy to be able to go to the party and they went inside and the music began and there was great food to eat and all that kind of stuff and the sky didn't fall down. Hold on for a minute. Uh, But then, you know, the girls who went looking for oil, they finally found some. They had to go all over town to find some. But they finally found it, and they came back, and no one was there. And they knocked on the door of the celebration, and they said, can you let us in? And the people inside said, sorry, it's too late. You're too late for the party. And they were so, 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 so sad. Now, Jesus told this story, and the point of the story we read in the gospel is that we really are supposed to be prepared and be watching for where God might be coming and how we can meet Jesus. And uh, there are a lot of ways we can do that. One of the ways is we come to chapel. We set up some time in our household when we look at chapel. Another way is when we don't have COVID, you come to church 
and we worship together and we go to church school and we go to worship and we um, see people we love. That's another way. Another way is that we help people who are in need. There's a favorite way that I learned from the young people in one of my churches before I came to St. James. And they would say, you know, what we're going to try to do every day is to see if we can find some God sightings, see if there's a way that we can um, come to know, come to see where God is at work. And that's something you can do. You can do it with your family. You could do it every night at dinner. Say, where did you see God today? Where did you have a God sighting? All of that is a way of living into this story that Jesus tells that we should always be looking out, always be watching, always be staying awake, ready to meet Jesus. Amen. Now that we've heard today's sermon, let's together say what we believe by saying our creed. And repeat after me, I believe in God's love. I believe in God's love. I believe in Jesus' love. I believe in Jesus' love. And the Holy Spirit too. And the Holy Spirit too. Tells me what I ought to do. Tells me what I ought to do. Now we will pray together to thank God for our blessings and to ask for God's help. After each prayer, let's say together, hear our prayer. God, thank you for the whole wide world. Glory in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Thank you for the city we live in and for the church we go to. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Thank you for the families and the people we love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Please keep our world and our families safe. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Please take care of people who are sick, scared, or sad. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Hear our prayer. Please stay with us as we grow. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Hear our prayer. For what else shall we pray? This is another time to press pause and spend some time praying where you are with the people you are with. God, thank you for listening to our prayers. We ask for all these things because we love you and you love us. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We can't hug one another here or even shake hands that we can give each other a sign of peace, but you can hug or shake hands or kiss the people you love and say peace to them. So press pause and take a few minutes to wish one another the peace of God. going to say the prayer that Jesus taught us. I've asked Mrs. Enlow to help lead us so that we can follow along here in the church and you can follow along with us at home. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Give us this. 
Sabbath day. We are our day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.